So, uh, yeah, we're sitting in Parsons Bookshop on a lovely sunny morning in June. Uh, it's now the Artisan Cafe, but I knew it only as Parsons Bookshop. And it's one of the most famous bookshops in the world. Uh, after Shakespeare and Company in Paris, uh, owned by uh, Sylvia Beach, uh, Mary Lavin, the novelist, said that um, many times in Parsons there were more writers on the floor than there were on the shelves. Uh, Parsons started out as a hardware shop in 1949. Mayor Flaherty bought the lease and um, she had no interest in books whatsoever. But after a year and a half, she was clearing out her apartment down the road near Raglan Road and she put out some books uh, on the table outside the door. And being very religious, there were religious books, I can't remember the titles, but when she came back from church, the books were gone. So uh, she, uh, Patrick Cavanagh then said to her, look, turn this into a bookshop. Cavanagh used to come in every day to read the Irish Times. This, this was the shop that sent the Irish Times to all the people living in this area. So within a short time, a lot of writers lived around the area. Cavanagh lived down there in Pembroke Road. Brendan Behan lived in Herbert Place and um, Michael Caine, the artist, lived just down the road. John Behan lived in a lane off of uh, Herbert Street. The Pike Theatre was just over there. So all the literary and artistic people lived in this area at that time. We're talking about the early 50s. So um, gradually uh, she also um, stocked literary periodicals like Envoy magazine and uh, Many people then came to see the shop where the writers uh, could be seen. Cavanagh, uh, he was a bit uh, rude. He'd just come down from Mona, and don't forget, in his seven league boots. So he'd perch in the middle of the door, right in the centre of the door, on a little three legged stool. And people would have to go all around to, uh, to pass him, but it didn't bother Paddy. So he never read books here, he only read the newspapers, mainly for the racing form. And when he'd finished reading the, book, the, uh, the paper, he'd throw the pages away. So by the time Kavanagh got up and left, there'd be newspaper pages scattered all over the floor. But having said that, um, both Mary King and Mayo Flaherty told me that they had rarely they had rarely seen such a spiritual man. They, they said he was a man of great spirituality and also a proud man, conscious of his worth. He was the very opposite of Brendan Behan, who used to come in here, who was a bit of a showman and who got a lot of easy publicity. Howdy was more withdrawn, but he was a rare man, beautiful poet, as you know. Would Behan ever create any scenes here? Uh, no, uh, once he came in and some rather posh lady, this is a very Anglo-Irish enclave at that time, she, she saw him and she started talking um, about prison birds and Behan turned to her and said, he said, I am proud to have served my time, he says, like uh, Voltaire, he said, like Oscar Wilde, like, uh, I think it's O. Henry. So she slunk away, not Brendan, but Brendan, when he came into the shop, he would, he would come in, look around and see who was here and make a funny remark and then see what the reaction was. He was a bit of a showman and he liked that. Uh, the shyest uh, customer here was uh, Flann O'Brien. And Flann O'Brien, there was a big bookcase here in the centre. Flann would hide behind the bookcase with his hat. He was small, anyhow. And they would, he would, they would never know he was there till they saw him leaving. And then the following day, the Irish Times column would contain some big word that he picked up in the dictionary with which he lambasted the politicians and the gobdolls of Dublin. And there were many local characters who would pop in because the door was always open and um, it was a sort of a clearinghouse for gossip. And a lot of people would have been stranded by development and were lonely and all the rest of them. The door was always open for them. But one of the most eccentric characters was an Englishman. He was um, a defrocked RAF pilot. Allegedly, he bombed his own airbase during the war. But his name was Sir Anthony D. Houghton. And he would come in uh, wearing just a sack. A yeah, sack was his gear, he was rather eccentric. And he would bring a bottle of wine and he would, they would pour out the bottle of wine on the little weighing scales over there and he would drink the wine from the weighing scales. 
But um, sadly, as I say, as time went on, computerization, chain stores caught up with Parsons. And um, how uh, Mayo Flaherty contrived to feed herself and the five ladies who worked there for so long, I don't know. But eventually they closed um, in May 1989. And uh, by the way, um, I knew them very well. I was rarely out of the shop. I was here every day. So I organized a little party across the road. Cheers pub, now it's called something else. And uh, Beatrice Behan, Brendan's widow, came along. And Mary Lavin came along with her husband. And um, I spoke to uh, Mayor Flaherty on the night uh, she closed. And she stood at the door looking down Baggage Street and Pembroke Road. And she said to me, um, will you look at, there was a jeep stranded on the bridge. Will you look at that jeep and not a jungle inside? And that juggernaut belching smoke. Though people were poor in Parsons' early days, Dublin was a quiet, civilised and safe place. Now it's all rush and materialism. All this chaos only reminds me of how fortunate I was to have enjoyed the calmer days. One could look out the window, see the locals strolling past, chatting to each other, the messenger boys on their bikes pausing to look over the bridge at the canal, and Patrick strolling literally up Pembroke Road, his arms folded in front of him, his hat at his usual critical angle, before he suddenly veer across the road to see us. With his one lung, he wouldn't have lasted long in this bedlam, and we would never have had those lovely canal poems. I opened at the right time, and I'm closing at the right time. In Parsons, we never had a dull moment. Wasn't I lucky to have done something I enjoyed so much, and to have met so many interesting and entertaining people?